Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about capital budgeting in Excel. Uh, just to let you know, it's going to be a lot like your um, forecasting uh, week when we taught you how to uh, do all your forecasting. Um, but the good news is we're going to make it a little bit simpler on you for the fact that um, you might remember we had a whole list of different fixed costs for you to um, calculate. Uh, this week we're just going to say, hey, you have this many fixed costs this year. Uh, because what we really want you to do is see the bigger picture of capital budgeting, what we're trying to do, and that's compare our cash inflows to our cash outflows and taking the present value of those uh, streams and um, calculating our NPV, our, our, our internal rate of return, our return on investment. So, like I said, we're going to try to make it a little bit easier by not including all those um, into the analysis, yet you could. So if we wanted to, we could go analyze um, using a lot of those incremental costs. So if we added employees, uh, what is that incremental cost going to affect the project, stuff like that. But um, right now, we're just worried about concepts and want you to get to know it. Um, so hopefully uh, this, this is um, easier because it's um, you know visually less uh, on the eyes. <laughs> Um, but yes, the calculations are so a little complicated. Yes, the concepts are complicated. So uh, let's take it nice and easy and help you guys with it. Um, so first off, I want to talk to you about incremental cash flows. Incremental cash flows that we're using are, um, I'm going to create this project. Uh, I'm going to purchase this software, you might say. Well, what's that going to do? I'm going to get so many more sales and there is going to be costs associated to those sales. So those are all incremental based on what we're going to do moving forward. So a lot of your marketing stuff is if I have a marketing campaign, uh, there's going to be a lot of costs associated with that, but I might be selling more of something. So it's not for the, the um, analyzing uh, all of your sales. It's those sales that are associated to you um, introducing a marketing plan. So Remember, incremental cash flows, we're using incremental cash flows. Um, so to build this, uh, you want to have, uh, let's see, we're going to start with our units. So we're going to have so many units, we're going to have a price per unit. We're going to have a cost per unit. And let's set those up right now. Um, years. We're going to have zero through um, five. I'll explain the zero part uh, later when we, we, we'll talk about our initial outlay. And um, our initial outlay for this example is going to be purchasing some software to increase sales of uh, whatever we're selling. So um, I'm going to have increased sales of 20,000 units in year one, in year two, 40,000, 75,000 in year three. 75,000 year four, and then only 30,000 in year five. And the price per unit is um, 70, 70, 70, 45, 45. And so uh, maybe I'm selling uh, a video game, right? The first three years, this video game is really cool. And then in years four and five, something else comes out. So it's not as cool. So, um, you know, there's less demand for it. So our price is going to go down. And um, we'll talk about supply and demand later on in economics, but something to think about. Cost per unit, we're going to say it's 20 across the board. And these are our inputs, right? So uh, you can label it inputs if you want. I'm not going to right now. But um, let's calculate our incremental revenue, our incremental variable costs, and our incremental fixed costs. So we'll have fixed costs too. And um, for our example, it's going to be $50,000 of incremental fixed costs associated with implementing a project of this sort. Um, our revenue is going to be our units times the price per unit. So no different. And we can format all these cells. So let's do that. And I want dollars on here. These two are going to be formulas. So I'm going to color the cells because um, whenever I create a formula, I, I just want to highlight it. 
uh, so I know never to touch it because if that formula is right, um, I could only mess around with my inputs. Um, there's no reason to touch a formula because we're always going to be using it. Our variable cost equal to the units times our cost per unit. You guys should remember both of those from um, the week we talked about forecasting. And our, I told you our incremental fixed costs are $50,000 for every single year. So I'm going to drag that across. And this is going to give me total cash flow. And it's going to be our incremental revenue minus our incremental variable cost minus our incremental fixed costs. Now, I told you there is an initial outlay, right, that we need to consider. So um, I'm actually going to insert a few rows, initial outlay. And this is the cost of um, cost of software. And I said it was going to cost me Oh, I did that on the wrong one. Sorry, guys. So, on initial LA cost of software. In year zero, it's going to cost me $2 million. And it's a one-time purchase, right? And I'm only doing it right away. So zero, 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 zero. So I'm going to also make this negative, and I'll explain why in a second. I'll drag this formula over. So our total cash flow. is equal to our initial outlay in times zero, and then your incremental revenue minus incremental variable cost minus in incremental fixed cost for every single year. And this is a formula, so I'm going to highlight those. Um, and then we need to take the present value for cash flows. So negative PV, so when you start your present value formula, you always do negative. Your rate, well, we don't have that yet. So I need to put some stuff at the top. I'm going to call this cost of capital. That's the rate that we're going to use. Um, and I think we're assuming a cost of capital of 15% for this project. So our present value of cash flow is equal to... Uh, negative PV, the rate, so go up top and make sure you have the dollar signs around it because when I carry that to the right I do not want um, for C2 to move at all. The time I'm going to click zero because it's time zero for that first initial outlay. Your payment is zero, so comma zero, comma your future value is that total cash flow. And you widen the column, and get rid of the decimals, and then you can drag that across. You might be wondering, how could uh, $2 million have a present value of $2 million? It's because it's at time zero. So if you take the, if you discount anything at today's time, so if um, I were to give you a dollar right now, it's worth a dollar. So uh, same idea here, we're purchasing this, uh, this, uh, this software, and we're going to do everything right after that. So at time zero, our initial outlay, two million bucks, discount, two million bucks. So we have our present value of cash flows. Um, also, I said I, I told you I, w I would let you know why I made the initial outlay negative. It's a cash outflow, right? So anything that we are, um, it's coming out of our pocket, that needs to be a negative. So Yes, for total cash flow for years one through five, I said minus that 400, minus that 50. If you wanted to make those negatives um, and then just summed up that column, you can do that as well. 
it's all preference. Um, but I'm just letting you know that your total or your initial outlay anyhow should be negative because when we um, look at assess the project, um, you can see here my my total cash flows are uh, nine million one hundred twenty-five thousand, and my cost to do this project is two million dollars uh, initially. So um, just something to consider. Now we can calculate our NPV and our IRR and um, that fun stuff. So um, just to let you know, we have, uh, it's very easy since we already calculated our present value of cash flows. It's just the sum of those. So $4 million. Our IRR is equal to, oh, I should actually show you a check. So if you wanted to, if you're good with formulas in Excel, there's a, an NPV formula, and it's simply your interest rate, comma, the value of your inflows. So uh, we're bringing those in, your uh, the cash in from the project from one to five, right? And then you subtract out your initial outlay, $2 million. So um, it's just another check. Uh, but here I have to add it because add D19, because it's um, already showing as a negative. So uh, just a check if you want to do it. IRR is just equal to IRR, and it's uh, you take it of the total cash flows, not your PV of cash flows, your total cash flow uh, line, because what IRR is calculating is at what cost of capital does my budget have to be where my NPV is zero. So a high RR is great because that means I'm getting these high present values of cash inflow compared to my initial cash outflow. So um, good, I, good high RR, we're very happy. Now when we were deciding to do these projects and whatnot, uh, our, the best indicator is the NPV. Uh, we're not going to do a project that would provide us uh, a negative stream of uh, cash flow. Uh, what's the point, right? We're all here to make money. So um, we're also going to talk about mutually exclusive projects. Um, if you were given two projects and you had to decide on just one, so they're mutually exclusive, you can't do both, you can only do one, you would do the project that gives you the higher NPV. And um, it, it's, it's providing you with the highest uh, present value of cash flows in that in that point. Uh, and your return on investment, we're going to calculate that for you guys as your NPV over your initial outlay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it negative, the initial outlay, because it's negative right now. But all I want to do is take my NPV divided by that number. So um, we're getting, this should be a percent too. Uh, we're, we're making over 200% on this project. Now if I were to bump my cost per unit up to say 50 every um, every year you'll see what happens uh, I'm getting an NPV of 500 negative 500,000 so I would not want to do this project if, the, if my incremental cost per unit went up that high then um, you can see I'm taking a hit on my return on, on investment so uh, that's something you can do and then uh, we're doing a percent of sales increase for your, your sensitivity analysis. So I'm going to show you how to do that really easily. And we're going to do it based on our units. Uh, again, this is a formula. So anything formula driven, I'm highlighting. Uh, I'm going to put a row in here called units percent. And we're going to change our calculations um, so that your sensitivities work very easy. Um, it's just equal to this times the percent of sales, and you want to lock in um, C3. So make sure you put the dollar signs around it. You can drag that across, and this is now a formula, so I'm going to highlight it. And then we're going to change our row 14 and 15 incremental revenue and uh, incremental variable cost to be as a part of um, this units percent line. So instead of multiplying a E8, we want to multiply E9, and 
and you want to do the same thing for um, your variable class, E9. And you want to drag that across. So now when we're doing our sensitivity, we're saying, you know, look at 80% of the units. Um, you know, what would happen if you made it 80% instead of 100%? And maybe we can be more optimistic. Maybe we expect the sales to be 20% more. So just a, another way of looking at our parameters here. So if I did 80, you can see um, we're still in the clear here on the NPV. Uh, if I drop it down to 50, I wonder what would happen. Uh, still, still good. So right now, when we're looking at cost per unit with a $20 and we're selling it for 70, we're getting a margin of $50. That's pretty high. So um, you know, going back to the $50 margin. I'll show you what happens um, if we were looking at 80% of sales. Uh, we're we're in the negative here. We're not not going to do this project. So if we were a little pessimistic about it with that high of um, um, cost per unit, we won't do it. Uh, same if we dropped it. Say we dropped it down to 40. So $1 million is our MPV, and 80% of that, uh, actually, we'd still be doing it. So you can see how we can play with our spreadsheets a lot. Um, hope this was helpful. Hope you guys are enjoying learning all about incremental cash flows and capital budgeting um, and seeing how, how easy it is to do it in Excel and how you don't want to do it by hand.